So one of the first things that we need to do in IV biology is really have a good understanding of how we can uh, perform calculations to really analyze and look at experiments and data that we collect in those experiments to see if they're valid and to test and see whether they're, whether it's information that we can actually use and, and make some conclusions based off of that. And so in this opening activity that we're going to do, we're going to learn about standard deviation, t-test, uh, as well as mean uh, or average in order to be able to analyze some data. And we're going to do that. Um, by performing uh, kind of an experiment with uh, some chocolate chip cho uh, cookies, Chips Ahoy. And so the, the big thing with Chips Ahoy is that they have, or they claim to have, a thousand chocolate chips in every bag. And we're going to kind of test this to see if uh, this is something that we can test and, com and actually compare the number of chocolate chip cookies, uh, excuse me, the number of chocolate chips in an individual cookie and compare that to a different brand and see if one brand has more chocolate chips in it than another. Um, and this is the type of question that is actually used all the time in science, comparing different amounts or averages of something between two different groups. And I'll show you an example of this a little bit later. And in order to do this, we're going to have to use statistics. Um, we're not going to get heavy into uh, statistics throughout the semester and throughout the year, but we're going to kind of do a few different things um, that will allow us to actually compare different values between different groups. Um, so let's say that we uh, select two cookies from different brands, and we want to compare the number of chocolate, chip cookie, uh, chocolate chips in each cookie. In order to actually do that, um, uh, we're going to use statistics. Um, and suppose that we find that uh, the store-bought cookies actually contain more chocolate chips than the Chips Ahoy brand. So you count up the number of chocolate chips in each different cookie type, and you find that the, the store-bought brand has more. Well, is that always the case? That's kind of the question that we want to make sure of is, is this always going to be the case? And so um, we can actually use statistics in, help, uh, in order to help answer that question and to see uh, if this is a fluke accident, or if this is always the case, or maybe we made a mistake in, in the counting of chocolate chips. So there's kind of two possible explanations. One, that there's a difference between the number of chocolate chips in the two cookies. The store-bought actually has more. That's a possibility. Or the second possibility is that the store-bought cookie uh, selected just happens to have more chocolate chips than the Chips Ahoy brand, and it's just kind of a fluke accident. So we can actually test that, uh, again, using statistics. Um, so some different scenario possibilities. If there is a significant difference between the two groups, the average or mean number of chocolate chips in each cookie for each type should be very different. So let's say that Chips Ahoy, uh, their claim that they have a thousand chocolate chips uh, per bag would mean that they've got a lot of chocolate chips per cookie. Uh, and if we compare that to a store-bought brand that maybe has less chocolate chips, the average number of chocolate chips per cookie should be very, very different between the Chips Ahoy brand and the store-bought brand. That's kind of the, the premise here. If there's no significant difference between the two, meaning that they have about the same chocolate number of chocolate chips per cookie, we would expect that the average number of chocolate chips uh, per cookie would be very, very similar. And so we're going to try to answer this question um, in this lab using Chips Ahoy and Fred Meyer brand cookie, cookies. So in this video, I'm going to go through and kind of explain a lot of the different parts of the lab. In class, we'll actually conduct the lab. Um, kind of some very quick background information. The mean uh, or the average uh, is the sum of all, all the values divided by the sample size. You're probably familiar with that. Median, range, and number uh, are some other terms that we will use throughout the course of this activity and the semester. Standard deviation, uh, you may have heard of. Um, hopefully I've heard of, but, but this is one's a little bit more complicated. And really what it is, is it is the measure of the spread of most of the data around the mean. And I'm going to show you a graph uh, to help explain this a little bit further. One thing that you must know for IV is that 68% of all data fall within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. And again, I'll show you what this actually looks like on a graph here in just a second. Um, but what the standard deviation does for us is it provides a very clear uh, spread of the data, and it's not going to be affected by one or two random uh, results. Uh, the formula for standard deviation is this right here. S is the standard deviation. Uh, so we have the sum of all of the different means squared divided by the number of values in the data set minus 1. 
And so what standard deviation is showing us is this right here. Uh, we get this, this type of graph called a bell curve. Hopefully you've seen this before as well. And so let's say that this is our mean value. Uh, let's say that we find that the Chip, Chips Ahoy cookie uh, has on average uh, 50 chocolate chips per cookie. I'm just making up some numbers here just as an example. And so let's say that that 50 chocolate chips, that is our mean value. The standard deviation says that 68.3% of all chocolate chips, uh, uh, Chips Ahoy chocolate chip cookies are going to have plus or minus uh, one standard deviation. So of all of the Chips Ahoy cookies, they're all going to be within plus or minus one standard deviation uh, of that 50 value. Uh, so let's say we've got uh, 50 chocolate chips. If we're plus one standard deviation, that would mean that uh, Thirty-four point one percent of all of the the Chips Ahoy cookies are going to have fifty-one chocolate chips, uh, and another thirty-four point one percent are going to have forty-nine uh, chocolate chips per uh, per cookie. And so this sixty-eight point three percent is is saying that of all the cookies or all of the the individuals or the whatever it is that you're measuring within a within a population, sixty-eight percent are going to have um, whatever it is a specific trait or characteristic, in this case, number of chocolate chips, are going to have either plus one or minus one of the actual mean. Uh, this goes out farther, and so as you get farther away from the mean uh, and, and increase the number of standard deviations, plus two, minus two, plus three, minus three, you have more and more confidence that uh, y that plus or minus is going to cover uh, all of the individuals uh, within the population. Now, something else that we're going to be using is something called a t-test. And a t-test indicates the probability of two data sets being the same. And we measure this on a 1 to 0 uh, scale, where p would equal the two sets are exactly the same, meaning they're identical, or 0 means that the two sets are not the same. And so if we have a higher value of p, uh, they're more identical, um, and, and there's less significant difference between the two. Or if, uh, if we have a very small p-value, the overlap uh, is greater and that there's more significance uh, between the different results. So p-value of 1, um, the data is, is basically identical. Uh, 0.5 in this case, uh, there's some overlap but, but not identical. And then a p-value of 0 or, or closer to 0 means that they're not identical and they don't share any data at all. Uh, really what the t-test allows us to do is to test um, and look at the significance of difference between the means of two samples. Uh, and so what we can do in this case is we can compare, once we've, we've figured out the mean number of chocolate chips for the Chips Ahoy brand and for the Fred Meyer brand, we can use a t-test to compare the difference between the two to see if there's statistically a difference between the two, uh, which is actually a kind of an interesting question and something that we can use this for. Uh, to complete a t-test, you have to create something called a null hypothesis first. And the null hypothesis is, is pretty much always going to be the same for our case. And it basically states that there is no significant difference between the two data sets. If the t-test ends up accepting the null hypothesis, that indicates that the samples are not significantly different. If the t-test rejects the null hypothesis, it indicates that the uh, samples are significantly different uh, between the two means. And so we actually have to perform some calculations in order to calculate the t-value for the two data sets. This is the equation for the t-test. Um, it looks a little confusing. It's actually not too bad. Um, you've got uh, the means of sample 1, sample 2, and then standard deviation of sample 1, sample 2, and then the number for sample 1, sample 2. So you have to perform standard deviation uh, in order to calculate t-test, which is kind of one of the other reasons why we, we do standard deviation. Uh, and once you have all those values, you can just sub them into this equation and then figure out uh, and complete the t-test here. Um, so the, the kind of the process of, of performing a t-test, the first thing that you want to do is set the null hypothesis. And you want to state that there is no significant difference within whatever it is that you're, you're looking at. So in this case, you, you would want to say that there's no significant difference between the number of chocolate chips in Chips Ahoy uh, cookies compared to Fred Meyer generic store-bought uh, cookies. The second thing is that you want to set the critical uh, P level at 0.05 or 5%. And what this means basically is that 95%, uh, we are 95% confident um, that uh, 
whatever results we, we find are actually correct. Um, this is a pretty accepted level in biology, and, and if you look at uh, research papers and articles, uh, you'll see uh, generally this 5% uh, confident level used. Um, you want to write the decision rule for rejecting the null hypothesis. So if calculated t value, the one that you're going to calculate, is uh, less than the critical t value, then you're going to accept the null hypothesis. And I'll explain in a second here what the critical t value is. If the calculated t value is greater than the critical t value, then you're going to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the second thing you want to do is determine the degrees of freedom. Um, so this is going to be the total sample size minus 2 uh, because you have two different samples and you're going to subtract 2 from that. Um, and you're going to determine the critical value using a chart here and I'll show you how to do that in a second. You want to write a summary statement based on your decision so the null hypothesis is rejected or accepted because and then use uh, what we saw right here in number 3. Um, you're going to use this um, kind of set up for number 5 and then write statements of results that indicate the hypothesis. Um, to calculate a t-value for a, for a pair of data sets and compare it with critical value, you're going to use a t-test chart. Uh, this one's obviously really small and you can't really read it here, but I've got one on my website, or if you Google search one, uh, you'll probably be able to find one. Um, and so what you want to do is use the 95% confidence level, which on the charts is generally going to look like 0 0.05. And so based off of the degrees of freedom that you've calculated, here's the degrees of freedom, you look down this chart and you find your degrees of freedom number, you use the 0 0.05 confidence level, and you, you see where those two columns, uh, the row and column, match up. So let's say my degrees of freedom was 10, and I've got uh, 0 0.05 confidence level. This, then my, my calculated t-value would be 1.83, it looks like in this case, just as an example. And so if the t-value is less than the critical value, you want to accept the null hypothesis. And this would mean that there is not a significant difference. If the t-value is greater than the critical value, you're going to reject the null hypothesis, which would mean then that there is a significant difference. Uh, as the t-value increases, you become more confident uh, that the results are not due to chance. And so we're going to finish up today with an example problem. Uh, here is a little bit more of a real kind of scientific thing that, you, that, that somebody might look at. Um, we want to look at the beak length of two bird species um, were measured, and we, we found the following uh, group of data. Uh, we've got six different birds that were measured for each species, um, A and B, and then we have some different lengths in terms of their beaks. And we want to see if there is a significant difference between the two species in terms of their beak length. Um, so what I'd like you to do is uh, pause the video here, and I'd like you to think about what the null hypothesis would be. I'd like you to calculate the mean, the standard deviation, the sample size, the degrees of freedom, and then use that information to calculate and perform a t-test to see if there would be a significant difference between these two different species. Go ahead and pause the video, and then I will uh, start it up here again and, and go through the answers with you. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to, uh, to take a look at this and, and calculate these out. Uh, we'll start with the null hypothesis. In this case, we would want our null hypothesis to be that there is no significant difference in beak length between uh, species A and B. Um, and if this was a real study and you had the actual species names, you would want to list those out. Um, the mean for species A is 15.166. And for species B, it's 18.33. Sorry, that got cut off a little bit there. Uh, <clears throat> the standard deviation for species A happens to be 1.722. And for species B, 1.032. The sample size for A and B is 6. And so our degrees of freedom is going to be 10, because we have 6 uh, individuals for species A and for species B, which gives us 12. If I minus 2 or subtract 2 from that, I get a degrees of freedom, uh, freedom of 10. Our t-value is 3.86 is what I've gotten. And so our null hypothesis was that there was no significant difference between beak length of species A and species B. We use the t-table and look up the critical value for 95% confidence interval for a one-tailed test. We find our critical value of 1.812, which then means that our t-value is greater than our critical value. And so we conclude then that the null hypothesis that there's no difference in beak length between species A and B is rejected because the calculated t value is greater than the critical value, indicating a 95% probability of significant difference of beak length between the two different species. We'll do more practice with this in class, but this is kind of an introduction and a good example of, of how we conduct a t-test and standard deviation and why we would use them.